friends. Welcome to Baker Creek Seed Hall, part one. So I'm going to be focusing more on vegetables in this one. And part two will be more the pollinators. Uh, so we can take a little time to talk about them. So I've got a lot of seeds here. So I'm going to start right away. And I will pop a picture of the seed up while I'm talking about it. I hope you enjoy. Okay, first one, Kalima beans. These are by far my favorite uh, green bean. They are incredibly prolific. They are dwarf beans, so you can almost pop them in anywhere you need them. Uh, but these are a staple in my garden every year uh, just because of how wonderful they are. Next is giant red celery. Now this might be uh, my last year for trying to grow regular celery. Uh, I've grown pink celery in the past. I've gone grown regular celery. I'm growing this one. I'm looking for a certain flavor of celery. And I really think if I don't get it, I'm just gonna give up on it and maybe just uh, grow the seasoning celery, which is more, you grow it more for uh, putting it in things. We you know we're not huge celery eaters anyway, so we may not. So I, I've started some of those seeds, so we'll see how those go. Next is Elsa Craig onions, which I've also started. Uh, these, as you know, um, you need to start kind of early. These are long day onion types. They are uh, beautiful onions. They get super big, uh, so you can kind of pick them at any point uh, along their growing season. So if you don't want huge ones, then you can pick them a little younger uh, and they'll be smaller. Next is purple choice sum, which is really like a flowering Chinese cabbage. It's a 50 day variety. Uh, they grow about 12 to 36 inches, depending I think on where they are. They work really good as a cut and come again sprouting flowering cabbage. Very excited about those. Pink Beauty Amaranth. I've never grown this one before. I got to tell you, I was dazzled by the pink, uh, but I know that amaranth can grow kind of as a spinach or greens replacement in the summer. Not sure I'm crazy about that flavor, but I am crazy about using these stems as a celery replacement. So I'm going to see how that works because those look uh, pretty stunning. I also think those would look amazing pickled. Uh, next up, sweet nut acorn squash. Now, I'm really not sure why I bought this one. Because honestly, I have a whole lot of squashes. Um, I think it might have been because they are uh, their seeds are considered naked, which means they don't have those hard, tough shells on them. So essentially what you get out of these are pepitas. Uh, but honestly, I don't know that since my kids were little, I've ever roasted uh, the seeds inside of a squash. Uh, but uh, I do love a good acorn squash. Now, uh, this next one, I don't even know that I'm going to try to pronounce. I think it also now goes by pink, uh, pink beauty radish here. Uh, apparently it's a lovely mild radish uh, and it does well in kind of all climates. So I'm going to see if this one might grow even in the summer for me, but not produce a really, uh, you know how radishes can be hot and kind of uh, acrid sometimes if they grow in the summer. So if you can get them to grow in the summer, that is, because usually they're happy to bolt pretty quickly. Now this term it, this new turnip uh, is another one I've never tried. I think it's brand new to Baker Creek. Azuka a cane. And I apologize for that pronunciation. But it absolutely looked beautiful to me. Uh, I had a great turnip harvest last year. But I thought, these just, I mean, they obviously look more like a carrot than a turnip. But I thought, well, that's kind of the size... I cut them into anyway. So uh, I thought that might be 
a, a little more friendly in the kitchen and quicker to chop. And so we'll give that, you know, we're going to give that one a try. Uh, uh, the next one is Amsterdam celery. And that one takes about 80 days. Uh, it's a cutting type celery uh, so that you use the leaves and the stalks, but it's more used for flavoring in broths and soups. And, and I think this one, I think I've grown this before. Actually, I know I have. And um, I think this might become my celery replacement, depending on how these red celeries do this year. Next is Pablo lettuce, uh, which is a slow bolt. Uh, it says it's mild, crisp, and slow to bolt. Uh, it still is probably going to grow better in the spring and in the fall, but uh, it looked like a nice variety, and I love uh, like the multicolored leaves. So we're going to give that one a try for taste and see how that works. Now, I love with Baker Creek, they give you uh, free seeds depending on how many seeds you've ordered. You kind of earn, you know, free seeds from them. Now, they sent me two packs of my favorite seeds, and that is Mer Merlot lettuce. Uh, this is by far my favorite lettuce. Uh, I use it as cut and come again. I rarely grow, grow lettuce for heads. I just find it, it there's a better use for that much space. Uh, so I do a lot of cut and come again. Uh, it's a nice crispy, but it, how do I describe it? Soft, but crispy. I don't think that sounds very contradictory, but, and it, it is the darkest red lettuce I have ever grown and uh, by far most delicious. Okay, now we're gonna take a minute and talk about the peppers I got and then the tomatoes. Uh, first pepper is Arroyo Campoyo. Uh, it's a Cuban seasoning pepper, resembles a habanero, but if you remove the seeds, there's no heat, just delicious flavor. Well, I've been looking for a habanero without habanero heat for some time. And this one doesn't sound like, uh, this one just sounds wonderful. So I'm very excited uh, to try this one because I've tried habanadas and uh, other varieties that say they have no heat. And they don't have a lot of flavor either. So I'm hoping that this one surprises me. Uh, next one up, Korean dark green pepper. Uh, I had a favorite pepper, a Korean dry pepper that Johnny Seeds used to carry called Amazing Two. And the grower stopped producing or is no longer going to grow that pepper. So uh, I've got to find a new one. So I thought I'd start with this one. This sounds like it might be too hot, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, they look they look very similar. Uh, so we shall see. Uh, if that can replace uh, the pepper that Johnny Seed no longer carries. Now, this is one of my favorite peppers as well. This is Tobago seasoning. Uh, and this is traditional ingredient in like jerk seasoning. Uh, they are not horribly hot, but they have great flavor. But they do have a little bit of heat. They're lovely. Um, and those I'm going to be probably starting coming up here in the next week or two. So very excited to grow those probably every year for a long time. This other one, this next one is Bueno Mulata pepper. Uh, this is my son-in-law's favorite pepper. So until he tells me he no longer likes it, uh, I will continue to grow this for him. Uh, this year, I want to make him a hot sauce from it. And rather than just um, dried pepper uh, flakes. So I, I, I look forward to trying that out. Uh, Tunisian Bakluti pepper. This one I have also grown uh, for many years. Uh, this is a lovely pepper uh, used in a lot of North African cooking. 
<clears throat> excuse me. And they, the more, you, like as you cook them, they get uh, less hot. So I'm also going to try to see if these would make uh, good roasted red peppers this year. So, you know, roast them, take the skin off, take the seeds out and see if they just might be a wonderful flavored uh, roasted red pepper. Next up, one of my favorites, Sugar Rush Peach. Uh, this one, it does have some heat, but it's kind of smoky, as a little fruity, as, as the peach kind of says. I also want to make this one into a peach uh, hot sauce because uh, I have a tremendous amount of dried peppers. So I think I want to really go the hot sauce route. And, and the next one, it's another one that I'm growing just for that reason, is the Ashi mango pepper. Kind of similar. It's, it's hot, uh, but it has a fruity flavor. So I also think, because I think about peach and mango are some of the nicest flavors around. So I think that would be lovely uh, in a hot sauce so that that sweet is kind of playing with the heat. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat today. Okay, last year, we're going to look at some peppers. Excuse me, tomatoes. First one up, uh, black strawberry tomato. Uh, this is a 60 day. Uh, they are, in, in my book, they are rivaling uh, Brad's Atomic Grape in flavor. Uh, lovely tomato, very prolific, uh, easy to grow. Although this year I am going to be grafting all of my tomatoes um, just so I can see if that really does give us a boost in our production. Uh, Principe Borghese. This is the classic uh, sun dried tomato uh, that you see. I'm, I'm growing a little <clears throat> low on my sun dried tomatoes. So I'm going to, these are a, an indeterm, I mean, excuse me, a determinate tomato, which makes them uh, kind of easy to grow almost every, anywhere. They just get real big and bushy. Uh, this is a new one for me. This is Queen of the Night Tomato. Uh, it's an 80 to 90 day, so it's like a mid-season tomato. Uh, it's salad. It's a salad size. Uh, I think it looks beautiful, and I love any kind of tomato or, for that matter, any vegetable that pulls in those dark purple um, almost blue colors because of the anthocyanin that they have. So I'm very excited to taste this one. Uh, if not, just look at it and treat it like it's a flower in the garden. Uh, next one up is Indigo Blue Chocolate. I've also not grown this one. This I believe is from, uh, this is an 80 day tomato. I think, yes, this is from Wild Boar Farms. Brad Gates is like a tomato breeding genius. So I love to try just about anything uh, that he uh, produces. And this one again has serious anthocyanins in it. So very excited to try that one. And lastly, but not least, is the orange accordion tomato. I grew these for the first time last year. They are spectacular tomatoes. Now, in my mind, uh, I have the desire to cut in between all those little wrinkly spots and put in <clears throat> some, you know, buffalo, mozzarella, and basil <clears throat> and serve this exotic looking tomato uh, fully as an appetizer. So I'm hoping to pull that off uh, with one of these this summer. So anyway, that is it for Baker Creek Vegetable Hall. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the, the only thing I will say about Baker Creek, I love Baker Creek. I love their seeds. Their envelopes do not always carry the most information. So I usually rely on other seed companies to kind of fill in the gaps. Uh, but their seeds, as far as I'm concerned, kind of can't be 
can't be beat. So thank you so much. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed. See you, see you for part two. Bye now.